Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, what better place to discuss connected mobility than a mega city and a mega city like London? Um, because we're about uh, visioning the future, we're about visioning the city of the future in the next few minutes. So very much um, the world we're living in uh, is, is a, a huge world, but a, a world that's changing so rapidly when it comes to connectivity. Um, and uh, we're seeing a, a tremendous change in the, the community that is the, connect, the connected community. So how are these uh, interesting times, these are very interesting times to be talking about connectivity. And the world has never been more connected digitally, in trade, through travel and the internet of things. And the world, however, therefore, is much smaller, a much smaller place as a result of it. But with this interconnectivity comes huge challenge. Consider more protectionism, building of walls, and of course, close to home, Brexit, only a couple of days old officially. We can only imagine today what this connectivity freedom could enable if we let it. So the connectivity opportunity has to connect with the public uh, to represent and deliver on their needs. The voice of the people again will count. At the heart of what we must do, all do and where Ford is looking to lead sits both the customer and the citizen. For on our journey to deliver a connected future, we must ensure to take the public with us and not just rely on our technological wizardry. So what we must do is be purposeful and be inspiring. That means meeting the needs of millions of people on their terms everywhere in the world, addressing the challenges they face in their daily lives and ensuring that what we do is enabling them and understood by all. This image that's on the screen at the moment is from back in 1923. 20, uh, it's the, um, the Evening Standard, uh, and it was put on in the newspaper by Henry Ford, where he was trying to inspire the whole industry uh, to reach beyond, looking to open the highways to mankind. We're almost 100 years on from when this piece of uh, newspaper was published. But the next decade, we'll see that it's not just about personal transportation that he was referring to, but mobility in the broadest sense of the word. Mobility to enable freedom of time and of choice. The world is seeing a mega trend of huge population shift into the cities, urbanisation, and we've referred to it many times today. If I quote London's former transport commissioner, Sir Peter Hendry, <coughs> He said that the, uh, approximately two tubes, tube trains full of people are coming into London every week and they're staying here for good. That translates to about 1.5 million people per week around the world joining these large cities and living there onward. That's in total then a billion new uh, inhabitants of cities between now and 2030. So why are people are doing this? Well, one of the key elements or one of the key outcomes is that 85% of the global gross domestic product is generated in those cities. And that trend is set to continue and those cities are set to grow. And it's not about the mega cities that we know of today, like London. We will be joined by some very unlikely suspects going forward. Kinshasa, the capital of the D Democratic Republic of Congo, will see its population get to 20 million by 2030 from a, a population of 200,000 back in 1950. So times are changing all over the world and we must solve those challenges for the entire world. So with those growth opportunities comes challenge. So as the populations grow and their thirst for expansion and prosperity develops, air pollution, becomes a chronic problem. We are all living it today. So congestion also threatens the viability of these cities. It certainly threatens their productivity. So these are real problems which we need to address today and in the future. Legislation is driving change and lowering emissions in our cities and helping to deal with congestion. But the headwinds, as you can see, remain very strong and are set to grow further. 
At the same time, society's expectations of what services cities uh, are looking for are changing too. Sometimes this is referred to as the Amazon effect, with significant increase in the need for on-demand and instant delivery services. Try telling a millennial of today that what they want is, as a customer experience is what we used to have even 10 or 15 years ago, where shops didn't open on a Sunday, you couldn't go to a bank at the weekends, the nine to five culture prevailed everywhere. Today, already you can order anything on demand, personalized meal plans for your dog, prescription medicine, and in boutique coffee. New concepts and new companies are emerging on what appears to be a daily basis, and we need to deliver for them. Therefore, the revolution is not just about the car, but the commercial vehicle that moves what people need in these new world situations. That is why I want to talk to you today, but not about the car or the consumer. I'm going to focus on a critical group of our customers uh, who drive different vehicles, very different vehicles. I'm going to focus on those groups who drive vehicles that service all of us. People without whom society would come to a stop, and even more so in the future. These uncelebrated heroes who deliver our goods and services do it day in and day out, day and night. And in doing so, I'm going to focus then on what I believe to be one of the biggest issues in the uh, developing urban environment, the move, movement of goods uh, as well as servi and sort of services. Both of these pictures show Ford Transit's taking a leap. Um, the latter one is probably the one I'll talk about. Uh, the latter one is solving mobility challenges for those who serve cities. We need to transform cities from places like Singapore to Rio. And to do this, we must not only solve mobility challenges for the people, but also of those who serve them. By meeting the needs of the commercial sector, we will solve these problems. This is where Ford has strong ambition to lead, bringing together unrivaled expertise in the commercial sector, our understanding of the customer, and our technology and innovation. That is why we've developed our vision for the cities of tomorrow, which includes an outlook for the commercial vehicles in 2030. I'd like to share a glimpse at this Ford vision, part of the cities of tomorrow. So Ford's unique position in the commercial vehicle world with a 50-year heritage and products like the Transit, leadership not only at home but also with those global programs, and products that are at the forefront of technology. But there's another important ingredient, in fact it's probably the most important ingredient, and that's trust. Ford is also trusted to make this change. The Ethis Ethisphere Institute lists Ford as one of the world's most ethical companies and that's a survey that we've been in the top 10 of for the last 10 years. We're trusted to do the right thing as we approach this revolution in the automotive and mobility world. 
So Ford's strategy for the, for, for the commercial vehicle sector is threefold. We believe the cities of the future and the commercial vehicles that serve them must be built upon three main principles. Understanding and delivering with excellence the jobs to be done. Efficient electrification and ultimately autonomy. I'd like to cover each one of these in a brief summary. The jobs to be done, ultimately that's what commercial vehicles are here for. Delivering connected vehicles that ultimately enhance the productivity of those that own and operate them. So meeting the commercial need to deliver to the consumer on demand with convenience and at the right cost. Because cost is an extremely sensitive parameter in the commercial vehicle space. So supporting tradesmen, urban city deliveries and shuttles, the waterfront of these products. And these products are growing in their utilisation in cities. It's about 11% growth in the last two years in a city like London for the light commercial vehicles where other traffic has been stable or heavy goods vehicles has declined. So this really is the sweet spot for the cities of the future. Telematics and connectivity will drive shorter, more efficient, more reliable journeys and optimise infrastructure utilisation. It's not just about the vehicle, it's got to be about the infrastructure upon which it rides. Enabling solutions like Ford's Ford Pass Connect and the embedded modem technology, which is already in place in many of our vehicles, will be a major enabler. In the next five years, Ford will equip more than 20 million cars globally with, uh, with modems. The, the car is becoming connected. Electrification is the second strand. It must be sustainable, it must be efficient and cost effective if it's going to be adopted by the majority of customers. But it is key if we're going to move forward on the air pollution journey. In London alone, where commercial vehicles make 280,000 journeys per day, travelling 8 million miles a day, with vans making up to 75% of the freight traffic at peak, we must find a solution. We chose the plug-in hybrid uh, vehicle, the plug-in hybrid transit custom, to start our journey into electrification of commercial vehicles and to deliver range assurance and not create range anxiety. We, we will avoid the infrastructure issues that are created by a, a wholesale move to battery electric vehicles for large fleets. The plug-in hybrid transit custom project is a plug-in hybrid that will be available in commercial application in 2019. And we're spending time this year with a fleet of 20 vehicles piloting in London, the heart of a mega city, to really understand with many of our fleet customers what it takes to make that vehicle successful, both operationally, connectivity and commercially. So that project is a really important project for us in that it partners with the Advanced Propulsion Centre, an initiative sponsored by the UK government, and also with Transport for London, an authority that really does know what a city needs in the future. We're looking for an affordable, more productive and lower life cycle cost for that product as it goes into service, because we can't afford to add that cost burden to, to the businesses that it will be used by. This project is one of 13 projects that we'll adopt across Ford between now and 2020, backed by $4.5 billion of uh, investment to change the icons within the industry, products like Transit, products like the F-150 and products like Mustang, into electrified programmes for the future. Autonomy is the third leg on the stool. Uh, autonomy is really for us productivity squared. If we've got uh, a commercial vehicle which is optimised in its connectivity, then automating it really creates that, that final uh, uh, degree of productivity, but also enables fundamentally new business models to operate and, of course, significantly en enhance the safety for the drivers and for the consumers. Transportation of the, the tr transformation of the transport provision in cities will be enabled by the use of autonomous vehicles and particularly for the use of autonomous commercial vehicles. But these really need to be in partnership with the city infrastructure we serve, not against it. 
So optimising the infrastructure usage and creating new business models that support the city is really our vision for the future. Partnerships are the way forward. Opportunities to reduce accidents and change the way we think about road safety will be a particular focus by the, through this technology. And Ford is committed and believes that the uh, SAE Level 4 solution is the right approach. And although our products will continue to have increasing levels of driver assistance technology for our broad, broad fleet, of, fleet of vehicles, it is our opinion that the Level 4 solution is the solution we will need. And we are pushing forward on our developments to deliver that in production for 2021, delivering for our customers. We've also invested recently a billion dollars in Argo AI, a new company with expertise in robotics and artificial intelligence, to develop software, strengthening our own capability and leadership in bringing these self-driving vehicles to market. We don't underestimate the task that's ahead. We intend to equip ourselves to be able to deliver the vision. And our European AV testing will begin later this year. So with this backdrop for commercial vehicles with these three legs, entirely new business models and entirely new mobility services are possible today, but will be possible to a greater degree in the future. So building on the foundations and with these enablers, fundamentally new business models emerge. The Ford Pass is a customer application and an interface for our consumers, not just Ford, Ford consumers, but any consumer, to help with services, to help with advice and support for their transportation needs. Chariot is a, a company we've acquired in San Francisco. It's a crowdsourced ride-sharing uh, ride shuttle service. Um, and it's presently in, uh, in two cities in North America. A third one is in Rollout but we plan to roll out around the world. That crowdsourced solution provides affordable transportation and is complementary to existing service provision, not competing with that provision. And finally, as an example, Motivate. Motivate, again in San Francisco, is a linkage with the, the cycling community. It's a bicycle service to join joint journeys together and create a simpler way of achieving that last mile. But watch this space, expect to see a revolution in this area. Our pathway, therefore, is a, a platform based on trust between us and our commercial customers, all built on the promise and heritage of products like the Transit, a vehicle that's trusted by tradesmen and women up and down the country and now around the world. Quality, reliability, practicality, flexibility, and ultimately cost of ownership delivering new services and new capabilities to our commercial customers that ultimately serve all of us, making them more efficient, more effective and more profitable, and in doing so, driving us into new markets and new opportunities. So I guess the question is, are we in a strong position to create this future? Ford is mo the most trusted brand for autonomous vehicles, according to an auto trader survey that was completed just a little bit earlier this month. So to transition into this brave new world, really we're all going to need that capability and that trust. My message then is we must think beyond the vehicle, to the commercial vehicle and all that they serve. The scale of the challenge, congestion, pollution and increasing demand for services is particularly prevalent in cities and will be unabating. If every commercial vehicle that represented those 280,000 journeys driven every day in London was just stood end to end around the M25. It would, it would cover the entire surface of the road on all of the lanes. So we're talking about a lot of activity in a city like London and the same around the world. That's where these vehicles are have adding value. That's why they're needed, but we have to find a better way to deliver them. So for, com for commercial vehicles in the future, Ford's approach is threefold, enabling the jobs to be done through connected vehicles to enable world-class productivity for those that own and operate those vehicles. Through electrification, sustainable, quiet, efficient and affordable, 
most importantly, accessible in the short term, and autonomy. Moving towards productivity squared, using the vehicle, a world-class vehicle with world-class connectivity and automating that, that product uh, to create a completely new dimension in, in businesses, new business models and improved safety. To deliver a cleaner, safer, more efficient, service-led, customer-centric transport network. In partnership with cities, not against them. And that must be our mantra. Enabling the cities of tomorrow to continue to thrive in partnership. As Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. I think Greg Clark said something earlier this morning. We're about shaping the future together with our partners in cities. Ford is on a journey to becoming an automotive and a mobility company. And that article back almost 100 years ago about opening the highways to mankind, never has there been a more important time to be opening those highways than today. And we intend to help on the journey with our foundation in automotive, our expertise in technology, our understanding of and trust from the customer to drive the next commercial revolution by thinking beyond the vehicle to the commercial vehicle. Thank you.